السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Well, it always has. In the first time people don't hear salam, it's going to be cheap. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Yeah, it sounds like you're a part this time. جزاكم الله خيرا. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له. اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. ما كير بارس وسترس إنديد إيميز إيه بلاشر وإن أونر فور مي تبي هير تتوك تو يو عن التابي وإيه أي وإن أم شور أول فاس أم سترغلين تو بيوريفاي وإيه سيس بيوريفاي أو بيوريفيكيشن أم حر وان ستاب إن تايم the idea that we always hear about purification of nafs, like people always talk about tazkiyah of nafs. And then here we talk about purification of heart. So there is a little difference between the two. Why purification of heart? What does purification of heart mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in the words of his khalil, his friend that he chose from amongst the human beings, he chose one of them, and of course the other one too, Muhammad sallallahu And the one that we're talking about is Ibrahim alayhi salam. That Ibrahim alayhi salam was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which he says, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ that he was talking about his father, who he tried to guide, but rejected. So he knew that this man would not be able to attain Allah's mercy and he would be thrown into fire, which is the ultimate humiliation. So you see, Ibrahim was making dua to Allah by saying, Oh Allah, do not humiliate me on the day when everyone will be resurrected. And that day, your wealth and your children will be of no benefit. However, there's only one thing that will be benefiting people on that day. That is, he says, Except the one who has come to Allah with a heart that is salim, that is purified, that is at ease. So, a purified heart, a healthy heart is needed for you to be saved on the day because that is the day also he said in the same, uh, same uh, place in the Quran That day, Jannah will be brought near to the believers, to the muttaqin, to the righteous one. At the same time, And the hellfire will be brought forth for the deviators, those who have corrupted their hearts. And they will be said to them that where are those that you used to worship? By deviating from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they corrupted their hearts. They have worshipped things that they were not supposed to be worshipped. Sometimes we have a problem too. Whenever we think about worshipping, we always think about like, there is a statue here, there is a statue there, and people used to bow down before them. No, there are many other ways people worship. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ara'ayta ilaha hawa. Have you seen the one who has taken his own desire as his God? So there are people who worship many different things, other people, their desires, their wishes. So here, you, if you want to have a qalb salim, a purified, a, a strong heart that is dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is submitted itself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what we're going to talk about today. The brothers and sisters, it is important that we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that kind of heart. 
And Rasulullah also mentioned, uh, told us that it is the heart that actually controls everything in our body. So that's why it's meant to be a healthy one. When he said, as narrated by Muhammad ibn Bashir in Sahih al Bukhari, he says, Be aware, there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it becomes good or reformed, then the whole body becomes good. And if you get, it gets spoiled, then the whole body is spoiled. And that is the heart. So, heart is important. It needed to be purified. And that purified heart is mentioned in the Quran as Qalbun Salim. So, that Qalbun Salim, what is it that we're trying to attain? What kind of heart is that that Allah mentions as Qalbun Salim? So, our scholars have tried to explain it to us that they said, even Rasulullah used to make dua by saying, Allah, make me as'aluka qalban salima. Oh Allah, I seek from you a heart that is healthy, that is purified. So our scholars have said many things. If you summarize them, you see this is the heart that is free from kufr, disbelief. It is free from hypocrisy. It is free from um, arrogance. It is free from hasad, which is envy. It is free from hatred, which is hatred for others. That it is something that is full of sincerity towards Allah, towards the believers, and to others. So, uh, like, how do we know that this is so important? It's because, uh, how do we know that this sincerity is important? Remember, Rasulullah also said in the hadith, and probably all of you know it, it's very famous, people talked about it many times, that none of you will be truly a believer unless you love something for your brother that you love for yourself, which shows sincerity, that your heart is tender, it loves for others, other Muslims and believers, everything that wants it for itself. And this is something, a heart, that has true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also a heart that is full of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is true that many of us today say that we love Allah and we love the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do say it becomes like a lip service and it's so easy to say that I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most. Remember Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was once walking with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Omar's heart was free from ifaq, hypocrisy, he would never hesitate to speak truth that he felt like. So he was holding the hand of Rasulullah and walking and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I love you the most, however, not more than that my own self. So what happens, Rasulullah tells him, you have not yet believed. Now, Think about ourselves. We always say that we love Allah and His Messenger. Do we actually love them more than our own selves? Omar radiallahu kept quiet, thought about a few moments, and then he said, Now you are more beloved to me than everything, even over my own self. So the Prophet said, Now you have truly believed. So sincerity for Allah and His Messenger has to be there if you have to have a good heart. So brothers and sisters, there are many things that we can talk about. So it is that if we do have it, only then we will be saved on the day. On that day, as Ibrahim said, the children and the wealth that we usually use in this world to save ourselves from the types of troubles will be of no benefit. Only if you have a good heart that is free from all sorts of uh, hatred, envy, disbelief, hypocrisy and other things of harmful nature, then you will be saved on that day. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those people. Now our question of the day, our uh, topic of the day was in the process of purification, we take one step at a time. The question is, which step do you take? If it is just one step you are taking at the moment towards the purification of your heart, what would that be? 
Remember, that step is the step of repentance. Because if you have had done things wrong, which will kill your heart, that the Prophet actually mentioned uh, in a hadith in which he said that in al abda ida akhtara khati'atan lukitan fi qalbihi nuktatan sawda. When a slave of Allah commits a sin, then a dark spot appears in his heart, or in her heart too, in the same case. فَإِذَا هُوَ نَزَعَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ وَتَابَ ثُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ But if he gives it up, returns to Allah, and seeks forgiveness, depends, then his heart is polished clean. So that darkness goes away. However, وَإِنْ عَادَ زِيدًا وَإِنْ عَادَ زِيدَ فِيهَا حَتَّى تَعْلِوَ قَلْبَهُ وَهُوَ وَهُوَ الرَّأْنُ الَّذِي ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُّمِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ However, the Prophet said, if they continue to the path of sin and committing mistakes again and again, then this dark spot keeps on appearing over the heart, so much so that the entire heart becomes dark and it becomes a dead heart. It does not do good to the person who possesses it that you will be saving him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. And this is why the Prophet said, this is the ra'ah that Allah mentioned in the Qur'an when he said, كَلَّا بَلْرَوْنَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَسِبُونَ Nay, but on their hearts is the ra'ah which they used to earn. Through their sins, they have messed up their heart. So you do not want to have a mess up heart. So take up a step towards repenting. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to do when He said, Ya ayyuhu ladina amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Asa rabbukum an yukaffir ankum sayyatikum, wa yudhilkum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhara. That He said, Oh you who believe, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere repentance. It is hoped that the Lord will erase your sins your mistakes, and he'll enter you into paradise, beneath which rivers will be flowing. So this is how we should be doing, taking steps and repenting. You're not going back to things that you have made mistakes. Another, if you want, it's too difficult to depend from everything at a time, at least one thing. If you make a mistake, do a good deed after that. That's what the Prophet also, also said. He said, اِتَّقِلَّهَا حَيْتُمَا Wherever you are, fear Allah. If you have done a mistake, you have done a sin, do a good deal after that. It will erase the former one. And deal with people with good manners. Remember, if you have done a sin, immediately go do a good deal. So Allah will erase the former one. The spot that you have earned in your heart, the dark one, it will be erased. A simple thing, and we know from the life of the Sahaba of the Allah, there are times they used to commit mistakes. But as soon as they were reminded, you'd find them running towards repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing good deeds. So Allah would erase their bad deeds and increase their good deeds. There was the case of this man from amongst the companions of the Prophet. He was a store owner, a shopkeeper. A lady came to shop in the store. She was trying to buy things that were outside, and there were some goods inside. He invited her inside. When she came in, he kissed her. Now, she was not lawful for him. A forbidden thing that he has done. And the woman said, O oh, slave of Allah, ittaqillah. Fear Allah. Now, that reminder from that woman that he has unlawfully touched. Said, oh, slave of Allah, fear Allah. That made him run to the masjid. He came to the Prophet and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have done this wrong. The Prophet did not answer his question. There was a time for salah. So they prayed. And the prayer is over. The Prophet said, Where is the man that came? Then? He came back. And the Prophet said, Allah has erased your sin. 
Because there is an ayah that was revealed, it says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَ الْنَهَارِ وَزُلَفَ مِنَ اللَّيْهِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيْهَاتِ He said, surely establish prayer at the two parts of the day and the night. Some parts of the night. Surely the good deeds will erase the bad deeds. ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلْذَاكِهِمْ This is a reminder for those who take reminder. So if you've done a bad deed, do a good deed. That could be one step towards your purification. A smaller step. Or you may decide to do one thing that you would give up from your life of disobedience. And there is also an example from the lives of the Prophet's companions. Remember a very famous story. A man come to Rasulullah comes to Rasulullah and says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the ahkam of Islam is too much for me. There are too many things to obey. I can't do. Tell me one thing that I can do. The Prophet said, Okay, you promised me that you'll never lie. So he makes it promise that, well, this is the one thing that I'm going to do. I'll not lie. And next time he goes out, he wants to do something bad, and he calls, well, I made a promise to Rasulullah that I'm not going to lie. What if the Prophet asks me, what did I do today? And how will I be answered? Should I tell him this sin I have committed? Or should I lie to him that I did not? But I promised him that one thing in Islam I will be doing, that I will never lie. So now he goes to, he gives up that bad thing because he can't lie to his soul or something. He goes to another bad thing that he used to do. The same thing comes to his mind. What if the Messenger of Allah asks me tomorrow? And what do I say to him? So, brothers and sisters, there is always one step to take. It is you who decide. Nobody will be telling you. There are things that you have heard, speeches after speeches. You have read pages after pages of books in the Quran also. But decide that you would take one step towards coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that would be your way of purifying your heart. Making your heart a heart that is healthy. And know that the healthy heart is the one that will save you on the day when nothing will be of any value. Nobody will be interceding on your behalf except the one Allah will permit it. So brothers and sisters, let us decide today, let us make a promise to ourselves that at least one thing I decide today to give up, that used to be of disobedience of Allah and His Messenger. for this discussion to teach us how we may work toward achieving a pure heart. I don't believe any one of us can claim we have a perfect heart. Of course, some are better than others, but we all have some lacking in this sense. May Allah allow us to improve ourselves with more knowledge. Next, we have Imam Hassan Akbar to discuss the topic of Tazkiyah and Nafs. Open